Africa, one of the greatest continents of the world, is richly endowed with both human and natural resources. In spite of these huge resources, the continent is still considered as the least developed. To some scholars, the dysfunctional political leadership system of the continent is one of the major problems of development. Others like Kunle Shorinyo, a motivational speaker, believe that Africa's underdevelopment is deeply rooted in the inherited lingua franca spoken by the people. In today's edition of Third Eye, we will be looking at African societal development, the lingua franca limitation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Olakun Leishori and Tutorai. You're well, welcome to third eye once Thank again. You. Thank um, you. You're a futurist, transformation strategist, and social reformer. Yes. When you say futurist, what does that mean? Something that has to do with the future? Well, um, as a futurist, you have the skill and the professional capacity to photograph the future and to be able to translate it into how it governs behavior today. So it's about trend watching. Mm. It's about um, photographing the future deliberately and using the contents of that photograph to instruct behavior today. Hmm. Okay, now, African societal developments, which I know the futurists can also do something about. Um, the lingua franca limitation. Do you believe that um, African development itself has some kind of limitation when it comes to the lingua franca that was? Oh, yes. It's not just some kind of limitation. It is the limitation. Mm. It is a major limitation that society does not underscore and nobody is working to deal with the complexities that are resident in that block. For, so I'll tell you that um, a young boy came to my house some years ago. His uncle had returned to Nigeria briefly on holiday from the United Kingdom and he had come to my house to see his uncle to raise money for the new engine of his taxi of his cab, which had knocked. So I was stunned to see this young man coming to raise money for a taxi cab. Because as of the last time I saw this guy years before, this guy was intelligent, clear. So I'm wondering, why are you driving a taxi? Why, why are you a taxi driver? You should be on campus or a graduate or working professionally. And he said to me, well, you know, first of all, I couldn't have five credits. I had four credits. But essentially, um, I couldn't pass English language. I wanted to study law or a social science. And I was struggling to pass English language. And my parents could not keep me writing the exams and paying for the exams because I continued to fail English language. Hmm. So what subjects did you pass, actually? He said he passed economics, he passed government, he passed commerce, but he failed English language. Wow. That sounds like OK, right? except if you take a deeper look at it, you will ask yourself, what language did he use to pass the other subjects? What language did he use to pass economics? <coughs> what language did he use to pass government and commerce? He used English language. But the language he used to pass those three other subjects, he cannot pass that one. The bigger question is, when the examiner is marking his paper, what is he testing? Is it testing the use of English or the technicality of English? I think he's testing the technicality of English because our boy can use English clear enough to pass three other subjects. It means that no matter how well you can write, no matter how well you can write or speak, if you cannot tell the difference between a pronoun and an adjective, between a clause and a phrase, you're not going to pass that subject. The bigger question again is, what is the goal of Ligua Franca? Is it communication or sophistication? Because if it is communication, our boy can communicate, right? It has to be that it's about sophistication. So if it's about sophistication, then we have a bigger challenge in our hands. And so in articulating the problem, I would say that the average Nigerian really um, will have to pass the test of grammar and he has to accept English language as a determinant of progress in his own country. Note that it is not his fault 
that he cannot speak English language. I'm an Ijebu man, I'm from Remo. It is not my fault. If I say, Mufe Malo, and I cannot speak Yoruba well, then I should be considered ras and silly. But if what I struggle with is English language, do you understand? I should be understood, right? Because it's not my language. When you say lingua franca, um, you're referring to a kind of common uh, language that is being spoken by particular people. And we know Africa, we have different ethnic groups. People speak different languages. And uh, Nigeria, for instance, um, though you are a Yoruba man, we have in Nigeria, we have Igbo, Hausa, we have different types of ethnic groups. And then lingua franca being English language has been considered as our official language from the lingua franca point of view, which we can all use to communicate across different ethnic divides. So when you now say uh, lingua franca is a limitation because you and I, we are communicating now, we are speaking English. I'm not speaking Igbo, I'm Igbo, you're Yoruba, I'm not speaking in Igbo, and you are not even speaking in Yoruba. We are using the lingua franca as a means of communication. And the last comment you made, the audience applauded you. And you said those things in English. How come? Okay, so it's very simple. So you and I can speak like this because you and I have the privilege of a good education. And then you must also note that some years ago, once you can speak English at a time in our history as a people, once you can speak English of any sort, you are a nationalist of some sort. Because English language was a determinant of progress. We have so many people who couldn't speak English language in the pre-colonial era, in the colonial era, even post-colonial era. And so the premium on English language is like having a first class degree today and the attention you get. So everybody, anyone that can speak English are the ones that get the jobs, you are the one that interpret for the white man, you are the one that stay in front, you get all the attention. So English language was an instrument of uh, progress. It was a career tool way back, a very strong one, right? Such that if you can speak English language, not necessarily because you have a strength of intelligence, but essentially because by any form of providence you can speak English language, you are our leader, right? Now, if you come down to today, we have to ask ourselves, when we say Ligua Franca, what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve communication, right? That is, I need you to transcend the limits of your language and the limit of mine so that we can blend our diversity, right? If that is the goal, then we don't have to insist on the highest standard of grammar. Let me tell you what I agree with. I agree that it is too late to stop English language in our system now. After 50 years of embracing English language as a lingua franca, it is too late to correct, to, to change that fact. But we can reduce it as a determinant of progress. Let me tell you what I mean. I cannot even marry the girl of my dreams right now if I don't speak English language well. If I you come sure? to your house, you and sure? I say, I'm very sure, if I come to your house and I say, uh, are you a father or maybe you are a girl, I come to propose to you, we are going to church on Sunday. Your father says, uh, where are you guys going? Say, we are going to Shosh. <laughs> Once you say Shosh, do you understand? Automatically, the man is signaling to his daughter, you have not found your husband. No. <laughs> Except the man is also a Shosh speaking father. So that by sympathetic <laughs> resonance, by sympathetic resonance, they agree. And so there can be some form of empathy towards each other. But the fact is, once you don't speak English language well, right, nobody's going to take you into the offices. Nobody's going to put you in any room of serious exchange. But the question to ask is, the Chinese man speaks worse grammar than a Gary seller in Benin. The Chinese man, however, in his own Mandarin, has made his own shoes, his own computer, his own cars, he has built his own building, is the second largest economy in the world. When he's at the United Nations, right, he will speak his native Mandarin. You are going to spend UN money to interpret what he's saying to everybody. Chun chun chan. I say I'm not doing. That's it. He's not doing. Everybody has to understand his language, right? They do that in the defense of their identity and their territorial integrity. And it's so important that we begin to understand that a man's intelligence cannot be captured by the limits of another man's language. And let me break it down for you. The way it works is, for example, you look at the subjects of development. Physics, chemistry, biology, maths. 
those are the subjects of development. Those four subjects make everything in this room, right? Apart from the gift of nature, you and I. The physics, chemistry, biology, maths made everything in this room. Every other subject is either selling what they make, distributing it, or protecting it. In actual fact, it is those subjects that make everything. Now, the nations that make all these things that we use, the TV, the cameras, everything, my wristwatch, my car, your air conditioner, these guys speak their language. By the time you check it, is it a coincidence? I will leave that to the audience to think about. Is it a coincidence that the poorest nations in the world all have a lingua franca? And that the most prosperous nations in the world speak their own language. The Germans speak German. The French speak French. The English speak English. And by the time you look at it, you see somebody like Clemens Westhoff. Clemens Westhoff was Super Eagles coach for about six years. For six years, Clemens Westhoff could not speak one grammar right. Tomorrow we play, Yakimi is core. You know, we win, we go to Zambia, we play, we win. That's how he talks. But the players understood him. He won matches and he did well. Some of the best soccer coaches in the world today don't speak good grammar. From Mario to, uh, I mean, think of all the best coaches. And there is nowhere in the world out there that nations are tested or judged based on their soundness of grammar. It is about the quality of their thinking and the strength of their character. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that is what is most important. Now, if you look at me right now, this is not me. This is what represents me, right? If I cannot speak English language, right, there is a limit to the kind of space you will give to me. If I come in here today and I say, uh, good morning, everybody, I'm come from Lagos, and, to, and I'm go, you're going to say, who is this blast from the past? Who, who brought this guy here? Pidgin is the proof of a people struggle with an original language. If I say, I'm go to Lagos, you know what I mean? Ligua Franca has worked. What I'm saying is, I'm going to Lagos. You understand what I mean? If I say, I'm come from Kaduna, and tomorrow I'm go um, to airport early um, morning, and then I'm come next week. You understand what I mean. So you don't need me to say, I'm going to Cardinal tomorrow, and I'm going to be back next week before you can understand what I'm trying to say. So let us focus on um, the use of English. What that means is that the average guy who did not have the privilege of attending the kind of school you attended, who did not have the blessing of having access to the kind of education you have access to, should be able to progress in his own country without mastering another man's language. That is all I'm saying. Before we had independence here in Nigeria, but I know African countries like uh, Ghana, they too speak English. Um, countries like South Africa, that has up to even 11 lingua francas. Aside from English language, there are other languages too that they use. Now, when you say lingua franca has a limitation, and I'm looking at it as limiting us Africans or Nigerians to be precise, in what respect? Oh, very easy. So, for example, like I said to you, the guys who's, who make everything in this room, so there are two types of people in the world. Right, the two types of nations, those who make and those who consume. Africa is the world's single largest liability. Liability on one spot. None is as huge as what Africa represents. Why? We produce what we don't consume. We consume what we don't produce. There's no economy in the world that can survive on that equation. We have received aids and support from the world more than any continent has received. Before we you continue, but you should also understand the fact that um, way back, when the colonial rulers, uh, which people usually refer to as masters, came to Africa. Africa was okay with what they were doing. Yeah. They had the best of um, natural resources. Yes. Their natural resources was plundered by yes. these people. Yes. The natural resources of Africa built places like United Kingdom. I hear you. Built America. I hear you. The workforce, the men, the young men that were able, yeah. they took them to the United States of America. Yeah. They worked in the sugarcane plantation. plantation farms and every other thing to develop the American economy, which I they are enjoying you. today. I hear you. So when you now say Africa, um, I, I mean, produces what they don't. We uh, produce what we don't, don't consume. consume, and we consume what we don't. Knowing produce. full well that Africa has never been allowed to develop based on its own pace. Well, the world true allowed, or false? The, the world allowed. Has Africa been ever allowed? 
to grow according to the pace of what Africa is supposed to grow in? The word allow is a symposium discussion because we didn't allow America to develop. They made that choice. Nobody allowed China to develop. They made that choice. We have a choice to make. The idea that we need to, somebody needs to allow us to develop. The choice of itself, slavery? The, 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 the idea that somebody needs to allow us to develop is in itself um, condescending and defining our smallness as a people. Let me say this. So slavery has happened. So colonialism has happened. But we can forgive the people of 50 years ago for the way they thought, for the decisions they make. The people of 100 years ago. We are now in 2017. Slave trade is now a part of our history. It's not something we can discount or delete. Do you, do you believe in neocolonialism? Well, you know... Post-colonialism, neocolonialism, which Ungugi Watiogo was so, 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 so against look, in Kenya. Look, the colonialism we are experiencing now is voluntary. The one that we are going to ever experience will be voluntary. I am saying the human mind has the responsibility to question its own past, to identify the errors and the unguardedness in it. Do you and know to why? decide about the kind of strength you will embrace going forward. The lingua franca thing came as a kind of unification somehow. Do you believe it has any it has form not of unified unification? Us. If anything, it has classified us. There are some people who, by nature, cannot say church. They can't do it, right? Some even have tongue-twisting problems. Do you so understand what I'm saying? This is not their fault. But society will laugh at them and scorn them if they say shush. What society? And, and the society that we live in, the, the Nigerian society, the African society. Okay, you know, I will, I, I, now, 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 I will now, give now, you this example. Um, can, can, can I quickly say something? So, before you continue, okay. let me just chip in this. Because okay. each time we say society, it means we are generalizing it. Yes. Probably there is a specific aspect of the society that will say that. I was in Oshogbo and I was interviewing the Ataoja of Oshogbo and he told me bluntly, I'm not going to speak English language. I will speak Yoruba language. He didn't know I am not Yoruba. And I said, no problem. And I interviewed him in Yoruba language. And he spoke all the Yoruba that he understood. And it was fantastic. He never knew I am not yes. Yoruba. What yes. I'm trying to put across to you is, when you say lingua franca is a limitation, how much of other people's indigenous languages do you even understand to make things work effectively no, no, this because is... because if i don't understand your language it's very difficult for you and i to communicate I hear freely you. i hear you what i'm saying is let us use lingua franca as what it is right now it is overrated okay and it is a determinant of progress in our country, if you are not able to meet up with his highest standards, it means that if I cannot speak the best of grammar, I can be discounted in the system. I am saying, let us, we've accepted English language as a lingua franca, right? You spoke of South Africa. South Africa have dealt with their diversity because they've made, they've allowed different languages to be the instruments of progress. Yes. So you don't need to speak Afrikaans before you can be any accepted into the system or be given any position in the system, right? So the idea is that they've made room for everybody. They've raised a bar that everybody can easily meet. And what we are saying, for example, is that, look, the average African, right? Let me, let me talk about the African. The African did not learn physics, chemistry, biology, and maths, the subjects of development in his own language. He learned it in English. The question is very simple. Why are the most prosperous nations not enduring a lingua franca? They speak their language. Is it a coincidence? Because they have never been colonized no, by no, no, those no. people. Yes, they've never been was, colonized. Was China colonized by No, no, no. The idea is that the British there is people. a result. No. There is a result that is common to all the nations who don't have a lingua franca. There is a result that is common to all the nations that have a lingua franca. So, the, the vast majority of the nations that have a lingua franca are poor. Nigerians did not choose English language. Some people chose it for Nigerians. Nigerians never met and said, our lingua franca shall be English. It was because we have a colonial master that was English, and then the few people who, re who related with him accepted that grammar as how we are going to go forward. What I'm saying is, now that it is not our nature, it's not my nature to speak English. It's not your nature to speak English. It is not anybody's nature in Nigeria to speak English. Okay, we want to choose a lingua franca. 
first of all, can we make English language centers available in every local government in Nigeria so that every Nigerian can learn English language free of charge because it's not his fault that he cannot speak it and he didn't make the choice to accept it as his own lingua franca or determinant of progress, number one. Secondly, if you go to private schools today, in most private schools, they teach Yoruba, they teach Igbo, they teach Hausa, but it doesn't form a part of their grade. I I'm going somewhere. They are not graded in Yoruba. They score other, other subjects, but they just, it's a compulsory subject you must take, but it doesn't form a part of your grading. Okay, if they do that to our own language, why can't we also say that English language henceforth is also a compulsory subject for every Nigerian in school, but it does not form a part of your grading? The goal of learning it, the goal of learning it is to be able to speak enough to communicate, not to master it. Nobody should be made to master it. Do you know how many kids could not go to university because they couldn't pass English language? Yes. And they speak good English, they communicate well. But because they couldn't pass the technicality of language, they couldn't progress. You progress, thank God for you. I progress, thank God for me. There are people more brilliant than you and I who are not on campus today, not because they don't have the clarity to do so, but because they couldn't pass the test of a limitation that essentially is an error of nature, if anybody's error at all. Uh, I just want to uh, find out this from you. Um, Africa, we know most African countries were colonized. Who colonized Ethiopia? None. Um, was Ethiopia also allowed to develop? Yes. Does Ethiopia speak, have any particular lingua franca that they use that is not from Africa? No. So the progress of Ethiopia as a country, can you compare it with that of so, South you know, Africa? When, when we are or defining, Egypt. when we are trying to give credibility to a philosophy or to an ideology or a theory, we don't base it on exceptionalities. We base it on the generic common experiences. So if you look at a sample of all the nations that, were, that are using a lingua franca, and all those who are not, you can see a common experience. We are not saying every nation in the world must have that experience. But by the time you have nine out of 10 having that experience, you are free to say you have enough sample to qualify and classify the path to this experience. Okay, so, so part of we should we not use saying, Ethiopia as an example. So Ethiopia being one nation, we can spend all the time analyzing Ethiopia. And I can tell you the social constructs and the contents of their history that is making Ethiopia struggle with where they are. But that would take us a bit away from the subject matter. The subject matter is about English language. And I'm saying if we sit down and we look at the, um, the average guy who is schooling somewhere in Nkalagu or in a village in Oyo, this guy was taught English language in Yoruba. Come Reo. Gore, he was taught English language in Yoruba. And then the teacher himself is struggling with the language. The student is struggling with the language. It's like two dead bodies trying to enter one coffin. By the time you look at it, you, as you sit here, you'll be stunned that you can no longer think in your native language. Let me tell you what happened to me. On national television, somebody told me that you say so much, you share so much, but you speak every time in English, only people speaking can understand you. Can you come to a Yoruba show and come and say these things you say so that those who don't speak English can identify? That made perfect sense to me. I'm a Yoruba man. Let me come to a Yoruba show. So I went to a Yoruba show, TV show like this, live. And then they threw the first, everything you say that has to be in Yoruba. They greeted me in Yoruba. I greeted back. I said, then they threw the first question at me. And I wanted to answer. And I spoke English. Yeah. Then I, I quickly corrected myself. <laughs> so I said, the, the idea, I realized that I couldn't communicate in Yoruba. Right now, I cannot make three sentences without throwing English language in. How do I say downsizing in Yoruba? How do I say construct in Yoruba? I now realize that I no longer think in Yoruba, I think in English. And because I think in English, I have lost a critical part of my nature. And I cannot express my best thoughts because nature is instructive. There is a reason why I'm not an Englishman. Now, the depth of this is very simple. When will Nigeria make 
a camera like this, made in Nigeria. When are we going to make our own television, our own cars? When essentially... Is it also the lingua franca that is oh limiting yes. oh the yes. aspect of creativity oh yes, because and by talent? The, yes, because by the rule of common... But this lingua franca does not limit those who dance and express different movements yes. and are all over the world traveling from one place to yes. another and they are making the yes. money. But you, you, you and I know it that does the, not, discipline, the discipline does required not, to express an art is different from the discipline required to express a science. Lingua franca is yes. lingua franca. Yes. Whereby we communicate. Yes. Probably from... For Nigeria, it's English. For Cote d'Ivoire, it's French. It's French. Maybe from a just normal communication point of view. It's lingua franca. You must not, not be grammatical before it becomes a lingua franca. I agree with you. And yeah. that is what I am saying we should promote. But right now, if you go for an interview, <laughs> and, you, and you say, um, well, how is your interview today? Uh, I'm interview with... Um, if you do that, you're not getting that job. Now, what we are saying is that this guy who is coming for an interview, if he comes here, just like I go to a girl, I say, I'm love you. I'm love you, I'm, I'm, I'm believe in you. you know, if I say that, the girl looks at me like, that does not touch at all, that grammatical error does not touch my sense of empathy. It doesn't touch my ability to love and pace a woman. It does not in any way address my commitment that. to romance. But that. I will be judged because I failed the test of container, not of content. All right. Um. Because English language, English language, language represents me. It does not define my virtue. Okay. Let me also put this across to you. Nor my intelligence. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. I went to a public school in the heart of Mushin local government. Where Yoruba language was the order of the day. I'm an Igbo boy in the midst of all the Yorubas. I didn't have a choice but to learn Yoruba language. Yes. While I will speak Igbo at home, I'll speak Yoruba in the school, and they will teach me English. So every child has the privilege of learning as many languages as possible. It's not true. Every. Every no, child no, no, that no, is no. growing up. Do no. you know why? Every child do you has know the why? potential to. Yes. Every child do you know has why? the opportunity to. Mm, it is there. It depends on how you want them to learn okay, it. Can, can, you I have every, can I shock you? You have every right to can learn as many languages as you want you? because they are young and no, they are no, growing. No, and no, they, no. You are, Let us throw this to the audience. Your environmental construct. Let us throw this open to the audience for comments, questions, and... Way forward. I so much appreciate the way you've spoken, but I noticed that there are certain things that you need to clarify. Good. For instance, um, you have accused a lot of people in your talk. One, even those people who are teaching English in Nigeria. Number one, you talked about as if the child or teaching them grammar or teaching them English was what actually or make most of them in the society which although I owe an exception to that, because the brain of a child is described as tabula rasa. In other words, it's empty. So whatever you feel into the brain is what the brain will end up giving back to you. Yeah. So even a child that is born in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. is going to speak their language as good as it is, as long as the child is being bred and buttered in that environment. Yes. So that makes it possible for any psycholinguist to tell you that, look, language itself is adaptive. It is not constant. There's no debate on that. Exactly. So, but the way you have made your talk, you have made it in form of as if language itself is constant. And once there's a problem with it, it tends to affect the personology of the individual, yes. which may not necessarily be so. Okay. So Can language I... itself is adaptive. Yes. As a result of that, what the English teacher and even those people who are trying to train people to know how to speak English are doing in the society, they are not necessarily putting laws to be learned. No. All what they are trying to do is to bring out dynamism and creativity. And that is why when you see our students are going for examination, we test them not necessarily on constants. We try to test them on how dynamic they can use the English language. So once you write your essay, a good teacher 
or a good marker is looking at how the child can use the language. For instance, Olaro Timi in his book, the, the Gods Are Not to Blame, he used a, an expression there. He said, uh, the monkey learned how to jump from tree to trees. These are coinages from indigenous Yoruba expression into the English language. Yes. These are what we are trying to train our people. Yes. So please, let us try to put dynamism and creativity. No, no, no. Language is adaptive, like you said. Yeah. It does not touch the potential of the individual. It does not in any way destroy its content, no matter the language he learns. We agree on that. That's what I'm saying. I am saying that if for whatever reason he's not able to learn English language, his strength and his quality is still intact. But society will not give him room to express that what is intact without any form of limitation. What is the goal of Ligua Franca? Start with that. The goal of Ligua is not information, it's communication. Yeah, well, not if, in, hold, in hold on, hold on. The goal of Ligua Franca is communication, not information. Right? It is to communicate. If it is communication, then it should not be sophistication. So when the examiner is testing me in class, right, it should be testing use of English, not sophistication or technicality of English. But they call it use no, of no, English. No, no, yes. They is it not use of English that they call it in your school? That's what they call it. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. You see, no. Let us ask the teacher or the lecturer. Do they call it use of we English? We all know they call it use of English, but that's not what is going on. But it will amaze you, as you have been a forefronter of this sort that you are teaching, that we search the new cancronies of everywhere. There was no viable Yoruba dictionary. <laughs> what was the problem? Now, the problem is not the people using the English. The problem is the fault of those who failed to document even the Yoruba language. Why did they, they fail? They failed because the institution... There's no reward for there's doing no, so. No, not that there's, there's no, no reward. Must you be rewarded? Must you be rewarded before you document something? You should not get a job and a salary. So the question <laughs> must is... Must you be rewarded? Exactly. I should not get a salary. All right, okay, 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 okay. okay. English, even the English that we are using, it will amaze you that we have the Oxford Dictionary. My brother, there is no Lagos Dictionary. You're not speaking for Nigeria. Right, because okay. we are not let, let us anything. Hold your thoughts. Um, it's getting quite interesting. Anyway. Yeah. I know footballers who don't speak English, but they communicate and they make all the money. Yes. And they are not bothered with passing one English exam yes. or so. Is there a hold place on, for everyone no, in no, a society? No, no, no. no, no yes or no? Is normal, there a place? No. In Nigeria, no. There's no place for everyone in Nigeria. In, in Nigeria. Nigeria? There's no place. Really? In a normal society, there should be place for everyone. In America, they call it the American yeah. dream. The idea that every iota of talent and skill, as long as there's a commitment to express it, we find room and opportunity to express it. It's called the American dream. Okay. In Nigeria, in, in America, if you want to succeed, all you need is to decide to succeed. Okay, in Nigeria, if you want to succeed, so, no, no, no. So you have Nigeria. to let me learn. In Nigeria, if you decide to succeed, you must be ready to die for yes. your success. <laughs> because the requirement is different. Here, the opportunities, you say that, is there a room for everybody in society to succeed? No. In Nigeria, there's no room for everybody to succeed. There is a room for some people to succeed when you pass the test of classification. If according you to you. Test, according if, to you. Not according to me. According to all the Nigerians who are in this room. Who, can you hear? Can you hear? According to all the Nigerians who are in this room. According to you and I. According to you but and But according I, to now, the Nigerian. Now let me say something very According important. to the Nigerian National Assembly. Yes. House of Senate, yes. House of Reds. Yes. There is room for everybody to Now, succeed. let me say something to the National Assembly. As I'm here now. Even these universities we went to the schools, we were told no, there is no, room the for us. Is true or false? Discussion. The university no, is let us just answer this true or false. Were you told in school that when you were being taught, you have room to succeed in the Nigerian society? True or false? Was, is this so? No. Thank you. <laughs> Don't tell lie on there. True or false? No. Can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Okay. The goal of knowledge is not the goal of Are you sure these people are Nigerians? <laughs> <laughs> the goal of knowledge is not recall. The goal of knowledge is transformation. Yes. The problem of our time is that those who know don't know why they know. So there's an abuse of knowledge. Of the Allah day, say, <laughs> at the end you of must the also day, allow me to I'm ask you a question. About this you must also allow me <laughs> to right. ask you a question. Right. Okay, we are rounding up anyway. So, <laughs> I know you are also a pastor. Yes. I've seen you preach before. Great. And in the church where you preach, I know you do tell people 
Africa is great, Nigeria is great, yes. there's room for you to succeed. No. Even in the time of recession, <laughs> you don't do that. I do that in relative terms and in subjective terms. You have never told them in your church that, look, you can succeed in this country. I have told them based on the ability to apply themselves at a level, not by default. <laughs> not All by right. default. <laughs> Let's take more comments yeah. and contributions. Okay. I want to divert. I want to divert to school settings. Let's assume for science classes or courses. As a person, I don't understand physics then, because I hate the subject because I don't know it. Then I look at it. I assume it has been explained in Yoruba language. Let's assume they express it. You'll be able to understand that because sometimes some lecture when they talk, they say show ye ye, cut him on to solely, and with that you understand it better. So what specific solution do you think they can apply instead of using English language as the only determinant? Okay. You know, you see, you just, you just nailed it for a classroom setting. Part of what we need to do in Nigeria now is to refuse the oppression of standards. Anything that is standardized is a human invention. It means some people at some point sat down with a commitment to regulate society. Let me tell you what academics does. Academics is very, very important in our system, but it's not enough. Because how do you know a quack doctor from a trained doctor? Both of them can hold a knife. Both of them can put a knife in your tummy. One will wake you up after putting the knife in your tummy. The other one cannot. The difference is when we put the, tummy in your, the knife in your tummy with skill, because it's trained, the other one will put it unguardedly. You can't use determination to perform surgery just because the patient is your brother. You will kill him and you will go to jail. So academics is what allows us to know the quack from the authentic, right? But education is superior to academics. For you to pass the standard of academics, you have to meet the requirement of a wall. Education is the ability of the human spirit. Listen to me. The ability of the human spirit to experience its environment, to question it deep enough to find the options that exist in it and to know the options to embrace as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. By that standard, many people that pass the test of academics are still not educated. Those who want to learn it in English will have that option. Those who cannot speak English and those who can speak English, both of them should be able to understand the best of physics without the limit of grammar. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's all. All right, so um, in rounding up, maybe we should test how <laughs> deep we are when it comes to Please, our do indigenous to language. Don't do that and, to you me. Know, and knowing full well that you're dressed in the Hausa attire and being a Yoruba man in an Hausa attire, yeah. maybe I should say Me Sunanka. You know, it's so sad that you just spoke some language from Mars. Me Sunanka. <laughs> the truth is, I don't understand. Okay. Kini Urukoi. Orukomi is Olakunle Shoreo. Orukomi okay. is Olakunle Shoreo. Okay. Gini Eba Afagi. My brother, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but so, so, so in is, rounding up this, it means yes. really we are, including you, yes. are part of the limitation. As a matter of fact, that is why I am the, you and I are the most You qualified. in particular. Me, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the most qualified, one of the most qualified people to champion this course because I speak great grammar, I understand English language, I don't suffer from all of these things I'm agitating for. I all don't right. suffer from it. But Thank, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming, Mr. Toda. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our audience, you've been very wonderful. Another round of applause for yourself, please. Thank you. <laughs> And to our viewers at home, thanks for staying with us. Join us on another edition of Third Eye. I'm Ozio Koli. Bye-bye for now. <laughs> awesome.